I will. Not. Speak. The man hissed through gritted teeth. It seems that you've forgotten that I specialize in extracting information. Nikolai smiled darkly before turning to face me. Rosalie, pass me those two knives on the shelf over there. Yes. That one behind you. My eyes remained downcast as I handed him the weapons. I couldn't bring myself to watch what was about to take place. Killing you today won't be a complete waste of my time, after all. Nikolai mused as he ran a knife around the center of the stubbornly silent man's forehead, creating a deep cut in the shape of a snake. Why a snake of all things? By witnessing your death, my naive little Fianca can learn what I do to those who betray and disobey me. So I will ask again, if you wish to live, who do you work for? Bathe in my blood if you want but I will not speak. The man's bloodied face morphed into a grotesque sneer. I might just. Nikolai seemed to actually be considering it. What do you think princessa? Should I? You will join me of course. But what about? You know. Diseases? I gasped in horror. So pure, isn't she? This one had never had blood on her hands before. She doesn't know what bloodlust feels like. He spoke to the man as if he was an old friend. She's just a little girl now, but I will soon mold her into something great. Nikolai suddenly grabbed onto the man's ear and sliced it clean off with minimal effort, spraying blood across his face. I shrieked louder than the screaming man tied to the chair when my fianca held the ear up at me with a manic grin. That was in honor of one of my favorite artists. Nikolai dropped the knife and grabbed my arm when I tried to step away from him, leaving a crimson handprint on my skin. I think I should take the nose now, yes. He mused. Since he took my coke I'll take his nose. Perfect. I stared in horror as he picked up a much bigger knife and held it to the bridge of the man's nose, making a shallow cut. Who do you work for? Nikolai asked again, but received only heavy breathing and a few groans as an answer, while his victim tried as hard as he could to hold back screams. I said. Who? Do. You. Work. For? Nikolai sent a hard slap to the place where the man's ear had been only a few minutes ago, earning a loud guttural cry of agony. Oksana Chernova. Nikolai grinned in triumph as he finally got what he wanted. I work for her. Ah. He put down the knife and pondered in silence, unbothered by the fact that his victim was on the verge of bleeding to death, and blood now covered a great deal of the floor where he stood. Oksana. That filthy fucking whore. I knew it. My face was white as a sheet as Nikolai stalked over to me and stood behind me, before roughly grabbing my chin and forcing me to look at the nearly unidentifiable man. Take a good look at this Kroshka, little one, this is what enemies of the family become. They deserve nothing less. His sinister whisper raised the hairs on the back of my neck. What I've done to this bastard is child's play compared to what I am capable of. This could easily be you if you make an enemy of me. Never forget that. And then he pulled out a gun and fired several rounds into the man's head, splattering the walls behind him with gore. I squirmed uncomfortably as he raised a bloodied hand and gently touched my cheek. You are a fast learner and have taken this better than I expected. You continue to surprise me every day. Nikolai spoke. You'll be rewarded of course. Good girls always get rewarded. Tomorrow you'll be allowed to go out with Delilah and end her on a shopping trip. Buy whatever you like, I don't give a fuck. The reward is money a lot of it, and some freedom. Do with it as you please. Twelve. Thirteen. Absolutely not, said Nikolai the second I walked into his office. You are not wearing that out. What's wrong with it? I glanced down at my red mini dress. I don't usually tell my women what to wear but since we aren't married yet, I don't want other men getting ideas. Some uncivilized creatures will see that as not a dress, but rather an invitation. He explained. I don't want you drawing too much attention to yourself when I'm not around. Come on, it's really not that bad. I protested. Bend over and say that again. It barely covers your ass. Now go and change. He ordered. Until we are married you can only dress like that when I'm with you. Not when you're out alone. Shall I call you daddy from now on since you want to act like you're my father? I rolled my eyes. If you don't listen to me, little girl, 
then I'll be sure to punish you like a child since you insist on acting like one. He glowered at me, but I noticed a flame of desire ignite in his cold blue eyes. Sure thing, daddy. I shot him a mischievous grin before quickly leaving the room. Ten minutes later I returned to the office dressed in a tight black pants and a spaghetti strapped crop top. Well, I gestured to my clothes. What do you think? It can pass, he grumbled. What, do you expect me to wear a blanket as a dress or something? I pouted. I don't like the idea of you leaving the house without me. Anything can happen to you, he ignored my sarcasm. But I said I would grant you freedom so I will let you go. Or, do you actually care about me? I teased. You have become a large part of my plan so if you die, everything will fall apart. Nikolai replied, face void of any emotion. I will not allow you to die unless it is by my hand. Here I was thinking you actually cared. I heaved a dramatic sigh. Come here. He ignored me once more and pulled out a black bank card from his pocket before handing it to me. This is yours now. Spend as much as you want as there is no limit. Consider it your first reward. A. Are you sure? I mentally slapped myself once the words left my mouth. I should have just taken the card and celebrated the end of being broke. Obviously, Nikolai looked vaguely annoyed. Now Delilah is probably here. She's very punctual and it's already 2.30. Nikolai was right. Once we got downstairs I was greeted by the smiling face of the red-haired woman. Beside her stood Ender, who looked ready to burst from excitement. Have her back before eight, said Nikolai sternly. Relax Nick. Delilah playfully whacked his arm. She's in good hands. Come on Rosalie, there is much to do today. Wait. He spoke just before I could leave. The other two were already out of the door so him and I were alone again. Yes? I asked. There is something missing. Nikolai stared at me for a few moments before pulling me flush against his body. Our eyes locked as he reached up a hand to lightly caress my cheek. And then our lips met and my brain temporarily switched off. All I could think about was how good his strong arms felt against me as he slipped his hands up my shirt. Once he'd kissed me hard enough to leave me light-headed, Nikolai's mouth left mine and trailed hot, open-mouthed kisses down to the bottom of my neck, where he sucked on the tender skin hard enough to leave behind deep purple bruises. After kissing my lips one final time, he pulled away with an infuriating smirk plastered across his smug face. Much better. He ran a finger over the new marks on my neck. You've branded me. I have hickeys everywhere. I groaned in annoyance while clinging to his arm to maintain my balance. He'd succeeded in making me incredibly dizzy. How am I supposed to cover these up now? Everyone's waiting on me. You don't. He grinned. That way everyone can see that you are mine. A ring means nothing in this society. You're absolutely nuts. I shook my head, although I couldn't help but smile slightly. Have fun princessa. He gave me a gentle push towards the door and slapped my ass on my way out. Typical. These men are all the same. Delilah laughed when she saw me, or rather my swollen lips and hickey-covered neck. Possessive fools, how on earth do you cope? I massaged my temple as we walked to the limousine that awaited us. You've got to make the man your bitch while allowing him to think that he's the one in control. It's what I did with Salvatore. Him and Nikolai think the same way, which is why they're such good friends. It's like they share a brain but they only got one half each so whatever worked on Salvatore will definitely work on him, she explained. Same here, chimed Ender. I did that with Ilya and now I've got him wrapped around my finger although he'll never admit it. I'm definitely giving it a try. I laughed. It seems you've mastered the art of handling these hyper-masculine crime lords. There are many cons that come with marrying into a mafia family, spoke Delilah once we got in the car, but the pros outweigh them. I've heard about how you came to meet Nikolai and I wish the two of you came together under better circumstances, but life is seldom easy for girls like us. We've seen far too much of the real world to ever have an easy life. How did you meet Salvatore? I asked curiously, pretty similarly to how you met Nikolai actually. She answered. He kidnapped me. What? I gasped. The two of them were clearly in love and seemed like a perfect match 
It sounds awful and I guess it was at first. I witnessed Salvatore murder someone and because of the code of silence, he couldn't just let me live to talk about what I saw. Either he'd have to kill me or make me join the family, so he chose the latter. She explained casually, as if this was an everyday conversation. I became an assassin of sorts for a short while before his father forced us into an arranged marriage. We ended up falling in love and the rest is history. I've got five kids now and I'm only 22. That says a lot, doesn't it? Wow. I blinked. Perhaps my life wasn't as bad as I thought it was after all. After just one look in her eyes, I could tell that Delilah had seen the worst horrors of the world. I had an odd talent for recognizing people who'd been through hell. Wow indeed. She smiled genuinely. But I wouldn't change it for the world. The road to our marriage hasn't been easy but it was so worth it. What about you, Ender? How did you meet Ilya? I asked. My story isn't nearly as exciting as yours or Delilah's. She giggled. Ilya met me when he was backpacking across Asia and decided to spend some time in Indonesia, where I grew up. He was engaged to a woman he hated and wasn't ready to join the family so he ran away for a year, and then he met me. I was also supposed to marry someone I didn't like in order for my father to finalize a business deal, until Ilya came along and whisked me away. We've been married since I was 18. I'm 21 now. Now that is a romance novel I would read. I laughed. Same here. Delilah agreed. It's so. Wholesome. We're here. Ender suddenly let out an excited shriek as she glanced out of the window. Several guards hopped out of the car behind us when the limo pulled up outside a shopping mall. It's nice to be a normal girl sometimes. Delilah grinned. You know, going to malls and shopping. I miss doing ordinary things like that sometimes. The guards don't walk with us in case you're wondering. It'll draw too much attention, Ender pointed out. They follow us from a distance so we can do our thing without people staring. Oh, I sighed in relief. It would be extremely weird and uncomfortable walking around a busy shopping mall surrounded by ten heavily armed men. So where will we go first? There. Delilah pointed to a lingerie store without skipping a beat. We've got to prepare you for marriage. In other words, we'll help you chose the hottest looking shit possible so you can drive Nick crazy. Conquering a man like that is not an easy task. Oh okay. I squeaked as the two women grabbed a hold of my arms and marched into the store. This is perfect for you. Ender held up a nearly transparent baby pink underwear set and wiggled her eyebrows at me. Pink is your color. I like that. I couldn't keep the grin off my face. And this. Delilah pointed to a sleep short so tiny it could pass as underwear. Wear that as if it's everyday clothing and act all surprised when your man becomes a red-faced, drooling mess. It's what I do whenever I want something and it always works. Nikolai isn't going to know what hit him, Ender snorted. This is a great help, I said. Really, it is. Us girls have to look after each other, Delilah replied while placing more and more underwear sets into my arms. Since we can't count on anyone else to do it, this, Ender exclaimed as she spotted a strappy black leather harness and matching underwear. I wondered how she always had so much energy all the time. The woman was practically bouncing off the walls. That, Delilah agreed. Save it for the grand finale when you finally make him your bitch. I might just wear it around the house for fun. I joked. Yes. Ruin him. Delilah laughed darkly. Make him bow. Three hours and several stores later, the three of us were in a bridal boutique on the other end of the mall. I'd long since lost count of the amount of things I bought. Together, our many purchases could probably fill an entire store. So which style do you have in mind? Asked the shop assistant. Ah. Uh, I blanked. I hadn't given wedding dresses or even my upcoming wedding much thought. Until now, it had been easier to shut the topic away in the farthest corner of my mind. Show her a little bit of everything. Delilah came to my rescue just to give her an idea of what there is to choose from. We were then led into a spacious showroom and told to take a look around. If I was being completely honest, 